art. It's beautiful. It's weird. It's disturbing. But most importantly, it makes everything around us more interesting. Okay, you know what? Scrap that intro. Today we're gonna go through the best and most incredible art that was ever put on a manga page. Every single peek in this top will be a feast for your eyes. So if you're looking for a good story with amazing art, ask no more. Let's just get right into it. Our first award goes to The Climber. The story follows an introverted guy named Mori Buntaro, I hope that I pronounced that correctly, who have a passion for climbing, but most importantly he want to climb alone, so he could get as far away from the society and reflect on himself. The story deals with a lot of themes around depression and loneliness, but what's the best thing about the manga is that you are exactly behind the main protagonist, following every little step towards the top of the mountain. I mean, just look at this view, it's truly breathtaking. Backgrounds are truly the strongest trait the climber have. The scale of this drawing is just incredible. The artist really wanted the reader to experience the feeling of what mother nature can offer. And it's truly wonderful. If you have a thing for fashion, especially old fashion, a bright story is definitely for you. The amount of details is put on clothing and every textile material is just amazing, with a lot of different models and types. It looks like everything was made by a master tailor or something, but even the rest of the art is just dope. This is a romance story set in the 19th century. We mainly follow the relationship between a girl named Amir and a boy named Karluk. At first it's a bit awkward because of the age gap of 8 years, but as the time goes on they start to really show how they truly feel towards each other. And the story even shows other couples and their daily struggle on that period. The characters are wholesome and cute and even the action looks very nice and flows pretty well. Every new page and chapter will be very pleasing for your eyes. You can easily see that the artist really put all his passion in every panel. I mean even the horses look nice. Kingdom is set in ancient China where wars and battles are at every corner. It has a lot of historical influence with even several characters being inspired by historical figures of that time. The art looks a bit weird and awkward in the first several chapters, but after that, oh my god, you will witness some of the best panels this industry has, with constant battles and wars in the true meaning of the word. I mean, here you'll see tons of battles happening at the same time, hundreds of soldiers fighting and dying constantly. The amount of things that are happening in just one panel, it's overwhelming at this point. It really gives the feeling of a true cold blood war. The details put on every single soldier, it's incredible. From armors, to horses, to weapons, to the gore, everything really. The best panels are those where you'll see the whole action from distance and really comprehend what's going on and those are almost in every chapter. Kingdom will never let you brief when the battle has started. The scale of the whole art is just at a different level. Next one is a personal favorite. Claymore is often considered berserk little sister and no wonder why, badass warrior with giant swords fighting horrific monsters. In the world of Claymore, shape-shifting monsters named Yoma exist who hide amongst humans in order to hunt and eat them. So in response to that, a group was created who infused DNA from Yomas into human warriors creating Claymore. But if they don't maintain the control, they will transform into much more powerful and dangerous monsters. So an extremely coin flip strategy? But this is where the art kicks off. Every monster is unique and vastly different from the previous one. Every design is up to 11 and the fights are super cool and fast. If you just blink, you might miss half of the action. Each battle is extremely tense because you have no idea who is gonna win and survive and what that horrific monster can do with his new powers. Visually, claymores are quite similar to each other, which is an extremely good choice because it contrasts extremely nicely with the vastly different monster who populate this world. And even the backgrounds are beautiful in detail. Claymore surely has a lot in store for the readers when it comes to wonderful art and designs. Halfway to the top we have Ragan. There's no edit here, this is literally the name of the manga. Take everything I said about monsters in Claymore, add some nightmare fuel, extra realism, 
and bam, you have a story with lots of disturbing and disgusting images. One day alien frogs started to fall on earth, infected people and transforming them into monsters that reflect their deepest desire. But some humans have control over their power so you'll get to see what they're gonna do with it. Some goes for good, others for bad and others are just crazy. There are a lot of interesting powers, cool design and transformation, everything is draw super detail with a lot of shading and in a realistic style, but this is what made it so disturbing and disgusting. The manga is pretty morbid almost all the time, like this guy wife was infected and transformed into a weird scorpion monster so he killed her things like that. There's a ton of action and cool scenes and the art style is something that you'll probably not see very often, especially in a battle manga. The art really provokes shivers down your spine but if you get past that or you don't mind or you like it, you will just gaze at every drawing is put on a page saying that's cool as heck and constantly craving for more. Sunke Rock is about this guy named Ken who is the biggest simp I ever seen. He likes a girl who wanted to move in Korea and become a cop so he decided to do that as well. But somehow he becomes a gang leader as well in the same time. And the gang becomes much bigger and powerful as the story progresses. Sunke Rock has the best anatomy I ever witnessed on a manga page. You can see every little muscle there. The faces look extremely good as well, especially the eyes. You you're gonna want to go to the gym after you read this. The art is constantly evolving to the point that you are gonna see shit like this. I mean, look at it, it's just flawless. I don't even know how you could get better than this. You can just mistake this for a real photo. The whole artwork is just gorgeous to look at. And when a fight comes in, oh my god, those guys really just smack their shit out of each other. Fighting with everything that they can put their hands on, like a pickaxe. And they are not just trading a few punches, it's straight up murder here. Sunk and Rock is definitely a manga that your art teacher will recommend when you start learning about anatomy and human body in general. It's clearly one of the best manga you can get your hands on in terms of artwork. From here on we enter in some familiar territory. By that I mean number 4 Vinland Saga. A story evolved around vikings and a lot of historical events and characters. We mainly follow a kid's quest for revenge in the first half of the story but there are a lot of great characters who you can mistake for the protagonist like Torkel and especially Ashelad. Not only the story progresses here but the art too. At first characters look like this and only 50 chapters later you get things like this. The artistic evolution just skyrocketed here. Everything I praised in this top you'll find in Vinland Saga. Amazing backgrounds, detail and distinct clothing fitting for that era, fights with a lot of things going on and large groups of people smashing and killing each other. Everything is top notch. And speaking of fighting, every action sequence is really put well together with a lot of acrobatic and amazing moves that you don't see too often. Villain Saga truly has something for everyone either being the characters, the world or the fights. I highly recommend you to check out the manga. I mean this guy punch a horse to death you definitely can go wrong with that. Before we going into the top 3 I want to get through some honorable mention that have some astonishing art but could not fit into this list. Prepare because this will be very quick. Chainsaw Man, you probably are already aware of what's about. Cool characters and monster design, action and fight scene that really fill my bottomless hunger for edgy things. Wacky lines are always present but that will not stop you to really gaze at some of the stuff that's happening. And even without that the pacing is so fast that you'll not have time to really look at the details. But sometimes you'll find some panels that are really looking good. Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan starts pretty weak, even more than usual, but towards the middle the starts to kick off to the point that surpasses the average manga. Amazing action and titan designs, backgrounds that are consistent through the whole manga who looks very nice and in the last part of the story I rub my eyes because I didn't believe what I was witnessing. It's amazing how Isayama evolved as an artist. Blame who likes to present the world with few words letting you explore with your own eyes. Really amazing backgrounds and world building but sometimes the main characters looks a bit weird. What is that face? But other than that, everything is cool. And Kaiju number 8. A world populated by monsters with the main protagonist being a hybrid between a human and a monster. Very interesting background, tough with lots of things and details and cool monster fights at every corner. Ok, now let's get back to the top. 
On number 3 we have a story about a guy who can kill anyone in just one punch. Sounds basic and boring and maybe dumb at first, but this world is full of heroes with awesome powers, cyborg, samurais, martial arts. You'll find a bit of everything here, villains who varies from normal humans to over galactic lords. The scope of this world is just gigantic and the art is so incredible that needs a bit of backstory. One Punch Man was first created as a webcoming by one. This guy. The story was pretty good and captivating, but the problem was that one has some extremely poor drawing skills, but that didn't stop him. It even helped him, because one day he was discovered by Yusuke Murata and he was really impressed so he called one and tell him, hey, I like your idea, let me enhance your vision. And oh boy, so he did. Murata is one of a kind artist, his work is beyond human, I can't even explain in words his art. Seriously, try describing this image if you can. Every line is put with a purpose. Your eyes can't even comprehend what's in front of them most of the time. I didn't even know you can do so much with just black and white. I could spend an entire day just admiring every drawing and little detail Yusuke Murata put on a page. His work is truly amazing. But we have two more mangas that somehow surpass him, even though just by a little. Vagabond made by Takehiko Inoue, who also made one of the best selling manga ever, Slam Dunk. And even that has some extremely clean art, but when it comes to the art of Vagabond, you are greeted with extremely impressive art in the opening pages. It's easy to see that this is not his first manga created. He used all the skills acquired up until that when he created Vagabond. It's without a doubt a mastercraft work. It has such a picturesque look, it's hard to explain, it's like I can feel every brush stroke Takehiko put on the page. The amount of details put on his characters but especially on the backgrounds, it's something that you'll not find anywhere else. Every single leaf or blade of grass has special treatment here, to the point that you really feel like you are right there side by side with the characters. Vagabond gives off such a realistic sensation. You could use the art in the history books. Look kids, this is how samurai smack their shit on each other back in the day. All the work of Takehiko Inoue belongs in a museum right next to other timeless drawing and paintings. If it was not for the next manga, Vagabond will be truly the manga with the best art ever made. So we finally arrive at our final destination. Most of you probably already know what I'm talking about. Berserk made by Kentaro Miura. Some of you might be disagreeing and I can understand that, because Berserk has not the beginning of Vagabond or One Punch Man. In the first arc the art is still pretty good but kinda average good if that makes any sense. But Miura improved his skills with every new drawing and by the time we reach Millennium Falcon arc the art is absolute crazy, with hordes of different monsters side by side fighting making the best panel this industry has. The attention to details on every single monster, it's amazing, it's incredible, I don't know how to say more than this. But this is not apply only in this part of the story. The Golden Age is often considered the best arc ever made, mostly for the Eclipse. There Miura has really flexed his art skills. The scale in the Eclipse is beyond comprehension. I could spend hours looking at a single panel and I will still not find all the details and everything is in it. It's just hard to notice every single thing Miura put on a single drawing. Anatomy, clothing, crowded fights, background, he really wanted to nail everything and he did. Often I hear about the fact that Miura spent enormous amount of time on his work with his editor telling him that's a really small detail, nobody's gonna observe that. But he didn't listen because he was a perfectionist, wanting to improve constantly. And it's sad to see that he didn't have the chance to finish his work. Now Berserk's story is handled by his best friend and the art by his editors at Studio Gaga. But of course they can match with the level Miura was at. And it feels like a regression in terms of art. It's definitely not bad, but you could see the difference when compared to what we have before. Maybe that will change in the future. But even without that, Berserk still remains the manga with the best art ever created. I hope I was able to show you something that might catch your attention and something to read. If I did that, remember to like and subscribe and let a comment if you disagree with this top and let me know about your opinions. Until next time, 
have a good time and I will see you in the next video.